Hello teachers, let's discuss the fraction half and all of its multiples. Let's start by re quickly reviewing multiples of p. Suppose p is a point on the number line. Here's my number line where I have marked off only 0 and, and the point 1. And as I said earlier, the minute we mark off 1, the whole number line is determined whether or not I actually take the time to put 2, 3, 4, and so on. So p is a point on the number line, p is a number. And by multiples of p, we mean a very specific infinite sequence of equally spaced points where the distance between any two consecutive points is exactly p. So here you see those points as the thickened dots uh, on the number line. And how did I produce that infinite sequence? We look at the se segment from 0 to p, and we take the segment and slide it to the right until the left-hand point is at p. And then we look at where the right-hand point is, and we keep track of those points. So. That's how I produce the infinite sequence of points. And, the, and those points are now the multiples of p. They're called the multiples of p, which I list here. Will, uh, list here. Zero is called the zeroth multiple of p by convention. p is the first multiple of p. 2p is the second multiple of p, and so on. Remember, p is at a distance of well, p from zero. 2p is a distance of p plus p from zero, and so on. Another quick review of a segment and its length. Here's the number line. One is called a unit, recall that. And this particular collection from zero to one is called the unit segment. The collection of points between zero to one is called the unit segment. And it's denoted by this notation, left, uh, um, a square bracket, left end point of the segment, comma, right end point of the segment, close it off with a square bracket. And we know the length of the unit segment is assigned as one. Now we can talk about another collection of points, any, collect, any segment such as this. Here, let's look at um, A, B. Those are points on the number line. And recall, any point on the number line is a number, so A and B are numbers. Now we can look at the collection of points or the collection of numbers between A and B. And th this collection of points is the segment by this notation. It's very similar to the unit segment notation. Square brackets, except here we write the left-hand point of the segment comma, the right-hand point of the segment, se that segment. So this denote, this uh, notation denotes all of the points between A and B. Now what is a, what, what do, um, this piece has a length. What length do we assign to it? For that we say slide the segment all the way down, down here until the left-hand point matches up at zero. And I'm just going to eyeball and say then the right-hand point probably ends up being here. I'm just eyeballing it. And it's easy to see because of the sliding activity, the length of this segment is exactly the same as the length of this, this segment. This segment, we call it sometimes the reference segment when the left end point is, is at zero. And then the right end point is a point on the number line, is some number, and whatever this number is, we say that is really the length of this segment, and hence that is also the length of this segment. So, so, uh, so with that said, let's move on to half and its multiples. So here's the number line, and I've listed here the multiples of 1, which you see as same as the whole numbers. Recall, 1 is this point, and 1 is also the distance of this point from 0. So 2 is this point on the number line, 2 is also the distance of this segment. 3 is this point, and 3 is also the distance of this segment, and so on. Recall also, every point on the number line is a number. And now we can see on this number line, certain points on the number line have been given labels, that's the whole numbers. But we also see there are infinite number of other points which do not have labels. So today we will talk about just a few, few other points whose labels I will give you. So let's get started. So here's a number line redrawn. And here we're going to focus on the point, on, on a particular point between zero and one. Let's look at this unit segment and cut it into two equal parts by length. That means I'm going to cu cut it into two parts where each part is of the same length. I just eyeballed it and put a number, put a point there. That point is now of the same distance from zero as it is from one. Now that point, let me thicken it. It is a point on the number line. So by our definition of a number, a number is a point on the number line. So that point is a number. It just doesn't have a label. Clearly, the label is not any of the whole numbers that we have known so far. So it needs a label, and it must be given. So we're going to create a label. Actually, we are not going to create a label. The a label has been created by 
uh, people before us. So we are going to just, record, I'm just going to tell you what that label is for that particular point, known label. It is, as you teachers already know, you recognize it as a fraction symbol, a line, and underneath in the in this spot, which we call the denominator, we write two to indicate that the unit segment was cut into two equal pieces. And we write a one here to indicate that that's the first tick mark that comes after zero. In this case, there's only one, one tick mark between zero and one, but that is one half. So now this point's name is, this point's label is the symbol one over two, which we read as one over two or one half. And remember that it's the one half is also said to be the length of this piece that goes from zero to one half. So this point, this new point, is, its name is a fraction, just like we said these, these numbers are called whole numbers. Now I'm introducing you to a new point on the number line. It is, this point is, is a number and this point is called a fraction and its label is like this, one over two. That two in the denominator tells us that the unit segment was cut up into two pieces of equal length. And now what I want to do is I want to look at multiples of half geometrically as, as an infinite sequence of equally spaced points on the number line where the distance between any two consecutive points is exactly this length, half. So how do we do that? As we discussed before, you've guessed it. So we take the segment and we, we slide it and we keep the sliding activity going and we keep track of the right hand points. So I will also take a zero. And as you can see, this, the next point I would get is this, because we, all, we said this, this, this piece is of length um, half, this piece and this piece are, are of equal length. So when we slide it down, the next point will be this. And we, we continue that sliding activity. It's very quick, it's easy to see that it's that would be same as cutting up each of these segments into two parts of equal length because this segment is of the same length as the unit segment this segment is of the same length um, as the length of this segment is same as the length of the unit segment and so on so let let me mark off all the points The thickened points that you see are indeed the multiples of half that you would get by do, taking the segment and sliding it down to the right and keeping track of the right end point. Okay, now each of these points is in fact a fraction. First I said this point is a fraction and its symbol is, its label or symbol or name is one over two written this way. Each of these points is also, the which is a multiple of half, is also a fraction. Now I need to tell you what symbol we assign to the, each of those points. So let's do that right now. So let's start naming each of the thickened points. So firstly, each thickened point is a multiple of half. It is a fraction, like I said before, and its name will be, will be a fraction symbol of this form. So let me write, let me draw these little line in anticipation of that. Each point, these thickened points will have a label that looks like a number, a whole number over another whole number, okay? And the denominator for each of these points will always be two, and I'll explain in just a minute why that is so, to indicate that the unit segment was cut up into two equal pieces and then we you and then we label this this point as one over two that two indicates that two pieces of the same length and then each of these points was produced by taking this segment from zero to one half and pushing it to the right the sliding activity we discussed so this two will this two denotes that that we used this particular piece which was gotten by cutting up the unit segments into two equal parts by length and using that to slide and obtain those points. And what do we put as the top numbers? This one denotes that this is the first tick, tick mark, first point to the right of zero. And this two, and also one half is the first multiple of half. And this, this point 
we will, we will put a 2 in the numerator to indicate that is, it is the second multiple of 1 half. It is at the tick mark that, that is the second tick mark, first tick mark, second tick mark. And we can also think of it as this 2 denotes that this long segment, this segment consists of two pieces, two pieces of this length. We can also think of it that way. Similarly, this point, as you can see, we'll put it as three. It's at the third, it's the third point, one, two, three, to the right of uh, zero, and it's the third multiple of one half. Another way to think of it is that three denotes that this particular segment consists of three pieces, three pieces, and where each piece is of length one half. That's what the three denotes. The minute you write one, two, three, now you can see these are going to be four, five, six, seven, and eight, so and so, so on. So when you discuss this with, with your students, be sure to ha also have a regular number line with the whole numbers written on it. So that way they can see that here, when we look at three, we'll, we think of three as a point. We also think of three as consisting of three pieces, where each piece is of length one. Four is this point. Four is also the length of this segment, this long segment, which consists of four pieces, where each of the shorter pieces is of length one. So it's a similar concept out here. When we look at this point and we see 2 over 2, the top part 2 is telling you that this long segment is made up of two shorter segments. Sh shorter segments. That 2 is those two shorter segments. And this 3 is telling you this segment is made up, this long segment is made up of three shorter segments of the same length. And similarly, the 4 is telling you this se long segment is made up of four shorter segments of the same length. So that's what the numerator is telling you. And um, the denominator is telling you that originally you cut up the unit segment into two pieces of equal length. And now we are using this. This piece serves the same purpose as the unit segment was serving out here. And for that reason, we also call 1 over 2 unit fraction because unit fraction because we are now marking off these points using this unit fraction and so on. Now notice each of the thickened points is a multiple of one half and it has a fraction symbol. Except the zero, they don't have a similar fraction symbol. So purely by convention, we decide that zero can also be written by the symbol zero over two. So we, 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 we are allowed to label that. That's the convention. So now if we want to list the multiples of half, here's how we do it. By convention, 0 or 0 over 2 is the 0th multiple of 1 half. 1 half is the first multiple of 1 half, and I will write it here. Okay. And then I want to list all of these multiples of half, and I commented below, all of the multiples of half, half have a fraction symbol as their label, and in the denominator of those fraction symbols, you will always find a 2, to indicate that we are using this piece um, and we are looking at the multiples of one half. So let me write those twos in the denominator. And if you look at the numerators, it is simply counting off in one half. So 0 over 2, 1 over 2, and the next multiple will be 2 over 2, 3 over 2, and so on. So there are lots of uh, advantages of introducing one half and its multiples on the number line. And I will show you um, those advantages as we move along over the next few videos by listing them as observations. So right now we can um, see when, we, when students count in whole numbers, this is how, this is how they count, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. They're used to that. And here also, when we are looking at multiples of one half, there is a counting process that, that's going on. As I explained earlier, the top number or the numerator was keeping track of the counting process. It was keeping track of how many of these shorter pieces are in that longer piece segment. So for instance, let, let's look at this segment, which starts at zero and ends at this point, which, is, which has a label five over two. So this long segment has five shorter pieces, one, two, three, four, five. 
and the top number numerator 5 is, is indicating it's keeping track of those shorter segments this two is is as I explained below refers to the fact that the unit segment was cut up into two equal pieces but the, we see the if you introduce it this way the students will see the counting numbers the um, whole numbers here zero one two three four five six and so on right away in the numerator so counting in once me means zero one two three four five six seven eight and so on counting in one halves would mean zero over two one over two two over two three over two and so on so they can see the counting one zero one two three four going on in the numerator the over two you can we keep saying it only because we are looking at this piece and we're counting off as lengths of that piece and now let's look at some more observations so let's end with a very quick observation so as you can see out here this segment this unit segment is of length one but it's also made up of two shorter segments and the length of each shorter segment we said is one half and the reason for that is this point is one half and we said one half is also the length of this segment so the students can right away see that this length one is is same as this length one half plus this length one half so our first observation is one half plus one half equals one and we are seeing that visually out here we have not yet taught them addition of fractions but they can see easily that if this segment is, is of, made up of two shorter segments of equal length then surely the length of the longer segment which we know is one must be the length of this segment which we said is half plus the length of this segment which is also half because these segments are of the equal length so the first observation is one half plus one half equals one and now I, there are many more observations and I will um, share them with you in the next video and when we do those when we make all of those observations can be made simply by this very nice picture of the number line and uh, with multiples of half written out on it and you'll see in that video when we make those observations those observations lay a foundation for equivalent fractions, addition of fractions, uh, and so on. We won't be using those words, equivalent fractions, and so on. But just from those observations, they, they, students will begin to th think about equivalent fraction, fractions intuitively and visually on the number line. And then when we formally discuss equivalent fractions, um, it'll, be, it'll be an easy topic for them. Thank you.